been reading a ton and working with her teacher a ton, but Savannah doesn't have an orange power goal. So where this is going to look a little different, rather than this being a reading conference protocol focused on the power goal, this is going to look a little more like what? Like the student action planner where we're identifying what that goal needs to be. Okay? Which we all do with all students at the very beginning of the year. Okay. So Savannah, tell me about the book that you have so far. Um, the book that I have is called Daughter of Liberty. Mm -hmm. And basically so far it's about a girl named Wynne who is trying to volunteer to go do something for General George Washington. Oh, okay. So that already tells me a lot about what kind of book it's going to be. What are we going to find out about? What kind of book is it? Um, it's sort of like this sort of book. Like, you... It's sort of like some sort of book where you learn, where we're going to learn about her the entire way and learn like random stuff, like what's going on with the war and stuff like that. Okay. So how far into the book are you so far? I'm on page eight. Okay. So let's go ahead and go to page eight. I'm going to listen to you read just a little bit of it. Where, wherever you left off is fine. Unthinkable, said George Washington, said Washington. I lost one of my best officers on such a mission recently. He just as a school teacher and went to New York City to find out the next British moves. He was recognized and captured by the British, British soldiers and, hang, and hanged as a spy. His name, Washington's voice quivered as he cleared his throat to continue. His name was Nathan Hale. I know about Nathan Hale, said Wynne. His inspiring last words echoed through the colonies. He said that he regretted that he only, that he had only one life to lose for his country. I feel the same passion for America. You must let me go on this mission for you. It can't be done, said Washington. The island is swarming with British troops. Okay, I'm going to pause you for a minute. So... Tell me what's happening right here in this section. Um, Wayne is kind of like arguing with him on whether she's allowed to like go on the mission or not because he says that it's too dangerous for her. Okay. What do you think's gonna happen next? I don't know. Maybe she gets caught by the British and then escape and then escapes. Oh, that's not kind of exciting, one doesn't it? Yeah. Okay. Uh, Maybe you need to write the end of this book. Yeah. Um, in orange, an orange reader, there's a couple of things that are happening. The first, that in a typical orange book, there's five to eight words that we don't use with our friends on every page. So just like I was working with Pearl, we want to be able to notice those words. So I'm going to ask you about vocab in a minute. But something else that's a big deal for an orange reader is starting to read lots of different kinds of books in lots of different genres. Because each genre has its own rules and its own vocabulary. And if we only read one kind of book, we don't ever get to know the other rules. So let me ask you, what's your favorite kind of book to read? Like if you get to choose anything in the library, what kind of book do you like? To be honest, I kind of like fantasy, but I also like the kind of books that are kind of adventurous. Ooh, fantasy adventure. Okay, those are kind of similar, so it doesn't surprise me. Okay, fantasy adventure. So for example, in a typical fantasy book, what, what happens? Like how do you know it's a fantasy book? Like what I know about fantasy books is usually like things that don't usually talk talk. Okay, that's a really great rule in a fantasy book. Like animals can talk and yeah. tables can talk and tables. right? Alarm clocks. Alarm clocks can talk, exactly. So that's a rule you've already figured out about fantasy. So something we want to do that we're reading in orange is to try lots of different kinds of books. So just like that rule you know about fantasy, you know the rules of all the kinds of books. Let's look at the vocab for a minute. As you were reading, just in this little section, I noticed several words that I don't say with my friends. They're words I can read out loud, you read out loud perfectly, but I don't use them. Do you see any words here that you don't use with your friends every day? Quivered. Okay, what do you think quivered might mean based on the like, way it's used? Maybe it means like you don't want to say it, but you're going to say it anyways. 
Okay, what in the text makes you think that? He did say it after he has, after his voice quivered. He, he did say the guy's name. Okay, it says his voice quivered. So what could that mean? What does it, what does his voice do? His voice like stopped for a minute. Okay, do you see any other words that you don't use? Passion, I don't use that with my friends. Okay, what do you think passion might mean? Like something that you like to do or like or know about okay. or you really like. Okay, what in the book makes you think that? Where was the sentence? I feel the same passion for America. Okay, I'm gonna pause you for a second, okay? So teachers, this is the point where we get with students at the very beginning and we wanna choose a new power goal. So I've kind of structured for you a little bit. I've gone back to the major learning and I've, we've looked at both. I've let her read a little bit with comprehension. I've let her share a little bit about her major learning and genre and I've let her practice with vocabulary. I want you to turn to your partner and tell your partner, if you were the teacher right now, what would you make her power goal? Take 30 seconds. So would working on vocabulary or genre, either one, hurt her right now? No, because here's the thing. If we decide to start with vocabulary, that's only going to strengthen her ability as she reads in different genres. Alternatively, if we choose to focus on the rules and structures of different genres, it's only going to help her vocabulary as she's exposed to new vocabulary. So is either one wrong? No. The only way it's wrong is if we try to do both at once. That's it. We're not going to do both at once. So if it were me, here's how I would do the rest of it, of the conference. Can we look? go back in? So one thing that I noticed as you and I were talking is you did a really good job of identifying your favorite genre and identifying some of the rules of the genre. How many of books have you read in nonfiction or historical fiction like this? I've read two before this one this year. Okay. What have you started noticing about historical fiction? What are some well, of the rules? Well, there's two things that I've noticed. First of all, one, it usually represents a historical figure in there somewhere. Okay. Or they're in there somewhere. Mm -hmm. And also, it's based on something real. Okay, based on something real. Something else that I know when we start using historical fiction, and particularly reading nonfiction, is that usually it's in chronological order. Do you know that word? No. Okay, chronological means it happens in order. This happened in the beginning, then this, then this. So tell me, I know you're only on page nine, but tell me first, then last. Tell me so far what's happened. So first, Poon was riding her horse through, through the town, and she was riding super fast, mm -hmm. and then she came up across George Washington and stopped, and then they started to chat, and then that's where we are now, mm -hmm. and now they're arguing about if she gets to go. Perfect. So you just tell me you totally understand how sequencing works, the beginning, the first, then, and last. So what I'd like to do, as you finish this book, I want you to see if you notice any other rules of this kind of genre. You said you've read two other ones, so I want you to really pay attention to what kinds of things you find out about this. So that way, when the next book you choose is in a different genre, you'll be able to tell me how it's different. So maybe, let me give you two or three post-it notes, and as you find something, you're like, ah, this happened in my other two nonfiction books too, you can post-it note it for me so that we can share it together next time. So what are you going to be looking for as you finish reading this book? I'm probably going to be looking for what kind of stuff happens and if it happens in my other book. Like you said, I'll mm -hmm. post it. Okay. Can I have a high five? Thank you so much. Can we give her an applause? Thank you so much. You can go. So, did you still see the pieces of this? Yes, but how was number one and two a little different? We had to do a little more identification first. At the very beginning of the year, if this is your very first time using Erla, don't feel like you have to identify the first power goal and then do a conference right then. We want to identify what each student needs to work on and then we want to prepare for conferences effectively and efficiently. But once we identified what she needed, I paused, I'll let you think for a minute, and then we went ahead and finished. But the idea is we want to give students something 
to practice.